<laughs> you can do this shit with Madison all day long, but okay. seriously, uh, you better back I, the up. Today, it's a tense reunion in Charleston, and Madison LaCroix is here to tell her side of the messy Austin Shep drama. For some reason, I just thought that was more of a nighttime thing. Plus, Naomi Olindo breaks down the salacious season of Southern Charm. This makes me feel a little uncomfortable. This is your reality check. Crazy! Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. We're almost at the end of the week. This is Reality Check, and I'm your host, Lindsay Rodriguez. Today, we are talking all about part one of that Southern Charm reunion, and to help me do that is Southern Charm expert and People.com writer and reporter, Jody Guglielmi. We got your name right this time, Thank girlfriend. You. <laughs> and all the way from Charleston, we have the lovely Madison LaCroix. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We are excited to have you here. We know that you're going to tell it exactly like it is, and that's all we can ask for you. Absolutely. So, thank you for joining me. Later in the show, we will be joined by Naomi Alindo via Skype to bring even more charm to your Thursday. Because, yeah, it's Thursday. All right, now, before we get into Southern Charm, we've got to dive in to our top five. At number five, we are starting on a sad note because Bonnie Chapman has opened up about the final moments of her mother, Beth Chapman's life, and the difficulty her father, Dog the Bounty Hunter, has had dealing with her passing. Bonnie recalled her mum's last moments of consciousness, recalling them as vulnerable and sudden. She told Survivor Net she quite literally choked on her cancer. Bonnie's recollection was not far off from the one given by her father, who recently revealed to Entertainment Tonight that as Beth prepared to die on June 26, she told him to simply let her go. Beth Chapman passed away at the age of 51. After after a long battle with throat cancer, so we send out our thoughts and prayers for the Chapmans as they continue to mourn this awful, tragic passing. At number four, in happier news, Chip Gaines is spreading the gospel of kindness. The Fixer Upper star shared his feelings on his blog in an essay titled, We Believe in Human Kindness. Chip wrote, it's been a tough couple of weeks for a lot of people in our country, and I can't help but wonder, how did we get here? I've been thinking a lot about kindness lately, about where it starts and what keeps it moving from one person to the next. Chip continued to encourage readers to print kindness flyers and hang them up at home, in offices and at school, and went on to say, the thing about kindness is, it's a choice. Now, we love seeing people in the public eye using their platforms for good. So, Madison, as a public figure yourself, do you feel obligated to use your status for good? Absolutely. I feel like um, I was shocked at how much praise I got for just standing up for myself. And I think that everyone should do that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think he makes a really good point that kindness is a choice and mm -hmm. we should choose it every single day. At number three, here's a fun one for you. Chrissy Teigen and her boobs are just fine. Thank you very much. The Bring the Funny host posted a photo on Instagram on Wednesday and fans were very quick to jump on Chrissy for not wearing a bra because it's always something. Poor Chrissy. She just can't seem to do anything right. But we all know that she is famous for her witty retorts and she quipped, allow me to save you from my lady parts. She took her response one step further by posting a very funny video of her writing down a slide covering her chest. Now, ladies, I don't know about you, but I am so sick to death of this culture of, like, shaming women's bodies and people thinking they have the right to opine on women's bodies. Should Instagram and other social media platforms take better steps to prevent this kind of commenting? I think definitely. I mean, we've made a lot of strides in getting there, but I think this is a perfect example that we still have a ways to go. Mm. I mean, for the record, I wouldn't be wearing a bra right now if I didn't have to. Oh my so, God, like, so first thing I take off when I get home. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's fine. Yeah. I think she looks great. It's she too freaking hot to wear a bra. That's so true. <laughs> and also, like, if you don't have boobs, like, don't comment, because you don't know. Right, Ex yeah. that's, that's a good point. Mm. Men have no place in this conversation. Yeah. Madison, how do you deal with stuff like that online if you, if you have people saying negative things about anything to do with you or your life? Do you ever bother to respond or are you just like, whatever? You know, sometimes I will respond, uh, but I try not to. I, I try not to look at it yeah. and just go about my, my life. Try but... not to fuel the fire. Yeah. Smart girl. Yes. At number two, Tommy Lee and his wife, Brittany Ferlin, claimed they were asked to leave Emerald's New Orleans restaurant, Del Monaco, due to Tommy's attire and behavior. In a video captured by TMZ, Brittany says the host came over and asked Tommy to remove his hat as it was a regular baseball cap. Tommy did remove the cap, but not before dropping the F-bomb. The couple went on to say that someone else from the restaurant then came up to them and said they heard Tommy use profanity and asked the couple to leave. Now, Del Monaco is a very fancy restaurant and it specifies on its website that there is a dress code. Uh, so do you think the restaurant was right in asking them to leave? Like, other patrons deserve to have a meal in peace without hearing, you know, curse words? Or do you think they overreacted? Um, I kind of think, like, the rules are the rules. Like, that's that. But, 
I mean, also if I'm wearing a hat, it's because I'm hiding how awful my hair looks. So I would say <laughs> too. And uh, I mean, I, I say win-win with both of that. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. His wife is smoking hot. So. She is, and very funny as well. Oh, Not really? a very good comedian. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean. I do think, take. though, that if the rules are clearly stated, mm -hmm. they knew what they were walking into. They knew right. what the expectations were. So in that case, I, 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 I side with the restaurant a little bit. Yeah. Also, as a patron, I'm thinking, if I'm paying $80 for a right. steak, like, I just don't want to be hearing, like, curse words. And I want to pretend I'm classy for a night. I want to pretend I'm Patricia for a night. <laughs> yeah, I'm still trying. <laughs> and at number one, guess what? More Duggars are on the way. On Wednesday, Amy Duggar was joined by cousin-in-laws Lauren Swanson Duggar, Abby Burnett Duggar, Anna Duggar, and Kendra Caldwell Duggar as they pose for a family photo showing off their growing baby bumps. Now, is there something in the water in this where this family lives? Like, what is going on? They I know are, it's a religion, but... They are a fertile group. Yes. I mean, they don't stop, literally. Do you guys come from big families? Uh, I mean, I'm, like, standard family. How many siblings do you uh, have? Well, I'm the youngest of three. Yeah, uh, me too. Okay, yeah. Jody? I'm, I, there's four of us. Okay. So kind of big. big. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know, my theory is don't have more kids and you have hands. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I guess that's a good fine, because two parents, like, right. four hands, yeah. but I don't know, it's a lot. Yeah. How are they feeding on these mouths? I don't know, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna drink the water. That's yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. The plus side mm -hmm. is all the cousins will be really close. Right. That's true. So and that's you know nice. they are such a tight knit family, so everyone I'm sure pitches in and helps yeah. out. And right. Yeah. But I just can't be imagine being pregnant again and again and again and again. Seriously. No, thank you. Well, on the mm -hmm. plus side, you can eat what you want for the rest of your life. <laughs> that's oh, true. That's <laughs> on that note, we are gonna go to our first break of the day. But make sure you stay with us because when we return, Jody and I are gonna get the scoop from Madison on the first part of the Southern Charm reunion that aired last night. Don't go anywhere. I thought you guys are stronger than, than a tire iron. Can y'all's relationship handle it? Is this the final straw? It's not. Welcome back to the show. I am still with writer and reporter Jody Guglielmi from People.com and Madison LaCroix from Southern Charm. And now, Madison, it's time to put you in the hot seat. All right. And chat about everything. But I am going to cut straight to the chase and ask you, are you and Austin still together? Unfortunately, we're not okay. together. All right. But... On good terms, though? Uh, yes. That's great to hear. Communication, yeah, we're doing... Uh, yeah. I mean, I saw in the teaser for next week, the second part of next week's reunion that maybe there was a bit of a friends with benefits situation going on. So. Yeah, we did that. And then after we like announced that, we were like, yeah, we should probably not do this. Okay. All right. What do you think it is, though? Because you guys are so on and off. And I feel like we've all been in that kind of relationship where you kind of just can't quit each other. What right. is it about you guys that you think, on one hand, you can't stay away, but also you, you can't seem to get it right? You know, in a way, it's just it's hard not getting it right like yeah. and we care about each other a lot um he's been my best friend for a year and a half even though we've done a lot of um messed up things to each other but we try to find ourselves back where we always end up and uh we just take day by day mm. so you still have hope i always have hope <laughs> for anything you know i don't yeah. want to ever say has austin met your son yes Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. How was that? How was the, do they have a good relationship? Yeah, I mean, I I never introduced it as like, let's, uh, you know, do this family thing. Um, he's obviously met my son because uh, that's a big part of my life. Yeah, so I, I needed to see how that worked out. Yeah. And it did. I mean, you know, he's obviously a big family guy. So. Yeah. Is there a part of you that believes that maybe Austin is your soulmate and it's just, like the timing has been wrong? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, I was actually telling another girl, like, have you ever heard of a twin flame? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I should probably dig into that a little more, but it's starting to sound like that's what he is. That's what he is. It's like something I cannot stop. Um, we just have a good time together, and mm. it's hard to convince everyone that this is your relationship when they're only looking from Right, mm. from one that side of things. Thing. Right, yeah. absolutely. And also, just for people who might not know what a twin flame is, do you want to just explain your version of that? 
Well, I, um, I'm not sure exactly, but I think it's like the antichrist of your love, right? <laughs> like, I mean, I think it's that, essentially it, it is like a soulmate, right? It's like the person right. who mirrors you best and who you're sort of destined to be with in some way, maybe not on this plane, but maybe yeah. you know each other in a past life. There's like all this like metaphysical stuff. Yeah, sure. like let's just put it this way. I never was in a rush to ever like get off work early or anything. And I find with him, I'm like, screw this. I'm. Mm. I'm ready to. Is Austin somebody who you see could step into a father figure role for your son? Um, I think when that opportunity is given to him, I think he he will be a great father one yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. That's a good compliment I, to give someone. That yeah. is. I no, mean, that's probably like the best compliment you could give. I someone. think so. Well, yeah. you know, he uh, he's getting his beer together. I think he's that's his baby right now. So okay. one step at a time. I mean, yeah, but I think he'll be good. Tell us about the, the sort of the dynamics of having a relationship that played out on a TV show. Is it harmful or is it helpful? And in terms of being harmful, you didn't really have the support of any of your castmates. So mm -hmm. how much did that play a part in your issues? Um, it actually goes back to like how I look at Catherine and how strong she was like to pretty much stand up to everyone who didn't like her. And it's, it's pretty much back to high school again. Right. Like you're in the, you're in the out, like the out crowd. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I, it's crazy how I get praised for standing up to the boys. And I, I think that just should go unrecognized, like just do it. Like, well, cause you're the only one that really does stand up, especially I the know. chef. I mean, no one else does. That's so <laughs> shocking to me. I, especially with his behavior, you know, I am. Well, um, yeah. I mean, are you seeing anyone now? No. I'm no. Not. Mm -mm. Boys, I come know. on, she's single. <laughs> yeah, I'm single and definitely not looking, but I'm trying uh, to be single for once. Okay, single but open minded. Absolutely. I love that. Jody? Well, I want to ask, aside from Austin, they, the reunion was teased for next week, and we see a little bit of a heated conversation between you and Danny. Mm -hmm. Last we saw on the season, you guys kind of were comforting each other. You made up about the STD rumor. Right. What happened when the camera stopped rolling? Um, we really didn't, you know, we didn't have any communication. I know yeah. we had, like, a little tiff uh, via Instagram. <laughs> um, but other than that, like... I, I knew she was upset, so I knew walking into it that we were gonna have words. Yeah. Right. Oh, so you kind of expected it. You weren't like, this is water under the bridge, or won't be brought up. You were like, ready for it. I mean, in a perfect situation, I would have loved for that to be the case, but mm -hmm. I knew I was gonna have to own my shit. Right. Well, also, because you're Patricia's hairstylist, and obviously she's a very classy lady, and so did she get on your case about the whole STD rumor thing? Um, you know, she was like, Madison, I'm like, <laughs> oh man, you know, that's like coming from your mother. It's like, mm. you hear that and you're like, I know. It's like the, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. That's yes. worse, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always worse. Well, as we mentioned before, you are one of the few people who can really stand up, not only for yourself, but like stand up to Shep. Mm -hmm. So looking back on this season, is there a moment that you're most proud of? Um, I think getting up uh, at Patricia's party, and just closing that down, and I tried the best that I could uh, to resolve the situation, and it didn't work out. So I would say just water under the bridge, just yeah. let, letting it go. Mm. I loved that, that talk because you were so calm, you were so collected, and mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the time, Chef is looking for a rise, he's looking for a big reaction, especially out of the women. Right. So like, I just have to commend you that you just Aww. sat back and you were just like, say what you're gonna say, then I'll say what I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I um, yeah, Patricia obviously told me to apologize. <laughs> right. So in a way, I was like 50-50, but. Well, you handled it like a champ. If you were asked to come back for another season, would you? Who knows? I mean, I, let me, I just gotta get through this reunion first. <laughs> right. Then. Yeah, well, Craig told us you guys filmed for nine hours, so. It's a long day. It's a long day, so mm -hmm. I'm guessing there's gonna be a lot more unfolding over the coming, coming weeks. Yeah. But, you know, are you still close with anyone from the cast? Other than um, Austin? Patricia, obviously. Yep. And uh, Catherine. You and Catherine on good tubs? Mm-hmm. Okay. But that's, yeah, that's, that's it right that's now. That's it.
Mm -hmm. For now, who knows though? Yeah, who next knows? season, stay tuned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, exactly. Yeah. Well, look, thank you so much, Madison, so for much. joining us today and being so open and honest with your answers. We knew that you would be. Mm -hmm. And it's great to hear your side of the story mm -hmm. as well. So thank you. And Jody, thank you yes. for always being amazing and being such an expert on Southern Charm. Of course. Fingers crossed for another season because we just can't get enough of y'all. Yeah. It is time for another break. But on the other side, another charmer will be joining us as we chat with Naomi Alindo, who is going to shed a bit more light on last night's reunion, so we'll be right back. But you're a bitch. No, but like a bad bitch. Like, I mean, I mean, you look in a good way. It's like, it's so <laughs> weird. Welcome back to the show. I am now joined by the lovely Naomi Alindo. She's on the line to talk more Southern Charm. Welcome, Naomi. Hi, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, last night, I mean, it was the first part of the Southern Charm reunion and it was intense really off the, like, right off the bat because for the first 10 minutes or so, it was basically a chef roast and then he went on this weird rant. Let's have a look. None of this matters, by the way. Our existence does not matter. Oh, Can we not dive Here into we this? The, the Earth is six billion years old. We are a, not even a blip on the screen. Just smile and try not to hurt anybody. Were you smiling and not hurting anybody this season? Not necessarily. So, Naomi, when Shep said this, what was going through your head? Because I have to say, all of your facial reactions were hilarious. I think that we all just kind of realized, because he went in with that right off the bat, and so I think we realized that he maybe was a little bit nervous and, you know, maybe felt bad or was scared about what we were going to say to him or something. So he just wanted to say that as a reminder, you know, that nothing matters and nothing is a big deal and everything's fine and just smile. And um, I think he was kind of trying to get himself out of the hole. Yeah, because he knew that, uh, you know, a lot of stuff was going to be coming back around later on uh, in the reunion. Now, it's been said that Shep and the other boys have a little bit of Peter Pan syndrome. So what's your take on this? Do you get frustrated with them sometimes with the male castmates? Oh, yeah. I mean, now it's better. It's not as bad as it used to be. But um, definitely, I, I think that they just don't want to work. They just don't want real jobs. They don't want to grow up. But, you know, look, the ladies are holding it down on the show because all of you girls are just like powerhouses. So that's so great to see. And then uh, last night, your relationship with Matul was put on blast. So let's have a look at that. Is it hard dating someone so regimented? No. Like, it looks like he's like, you can't eat this, you can't have that. And I mean, he was just trying to be nice, and instead he came off like an asshole. I mean, I'll be damned if, you know, Craig and I weren't like, that is not a good look. Well, look, uh, good for you for standing up for your man. It must be difficult to, you know, have your partner portrayed in a way that you know is not completely accurate. Um, how are you guys doing these days? Because you mentioned that you'd spoken about moving in. Has that happened? Yeah, so not yet. So his lease won't be up for a while. So we're going to wait on that. But everything's fine. Everything's great. It's it's definitely a weird experience, especially for somebody that really wanted no part in a reality show, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so I definitely felt for him there. But yeah, everything's everything's good. That's it's awesome. Just, yeah. And yeah. I, I know that one fan of the show even suggested that he was the hottest man to have ever been on Southern Charm. That must have felt good to have someone say that about your boo. To me, yeah, obviously, he is. Yeah. He is a, he's a very handsome man. I mean, look, even Cameron can't stop blushing when she's around him, so... Oh, my God, I know. And then that Jason got upset, I thought it was so funny. It's very cute. And also, you were very vocal on social media about what your castmates said at the reunion. Do you have anything to say to, to viewers of the show that have had negative opinions of Matul? Oh, I mean, it's so hard to explain to somebody, right, that, like isn't living it and I probably wouldn't understand it if I wasn't living it too um but what you see on camera is not always the exact reality and somebody's personality just really can't translate that easily so um yeah he just wasn't comfortable on camera he didn't want to do it he didn't like it he never wanted to do it yeah so of course it's not going to be you know super charming and great. Right. But, I mean, the thing is, if there's anything we should know about you after several seasons of Southern Charm is that you would not be controlled by anybody. You are your own person. You are very focused and strong-willed. So I think these accusations, if you will, of, like, him controlling you were a little bit silly because, like, we know that that is nothing that you would ever stand for. Um, I'm just not too worried about it. 
Like it's... Yeah, at the end of the day, you, you know that you're happy. You know what the two of you have together. Yeah. But having said that, I mean, we love the two of you together. So will we get to see more of him and get to know him a little bit better next season on the show? I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I really don't know. That's up to him. Mm -hmm. That's got to be his decision. So That's fair. That's fair. Well, look, I mean, so we've spoken about your current partner. So why don't we talk about your old flame, Craig? Because it seems as though your relationship has Im improved vastly, which is great. And last night he even offered you a Rice crispy treat. So <laughs> in your mind, was that a sweet gesture? Did it feel like a dig at all uh, at your new relationship? And I think no. what we all want to know is, did you eat the Rice crispy treat? <laughs> I actually, okay, I actually freaking left it there. I forgot it. And when I got back to my hotel room, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I left it. I really wanted it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, it definitely wasn't a dig. I thought it was really nice, um, just kind of an olive branch, if you will, but an, an olive rice crispy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And Craig's such a sweetheart. I can't imagine that he would, you know, make a, a dig at a reunion like that. And then another big talking point during last night's episode was Craig's relationship with Adderall. And, you know, there was a very open, honest conversation going on. So let's have a look at some of that. If you took Adderall, you would be up all night working on something and then you would take more because you weren't done. And by the time after like two days, your body would finally crashed. get sleep. You couldn't wake up because you needed to sleep. Yeah, I would go so until much. I crashed because I, I yeah. really can't sleep very well anyway. And I just use that as an excuse. So I have a lot of friends that have similar issues. They were prescribed it at a young age and now they can't get off of it. But he did say that uh, he had been off of Adderall for a couple of months at the reunion. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that he can stick it out? And also, you must be really proud. Yeah, I'm really happy for him. I think that that definitely was a big problem for him and something that really wasn't up to me to bring up on the show or anything like that. So I was proud of him for kind of talking about it and being being honest about it because he really was you know there was nothing covered up there was nothing that was a half truth he really was talking about it and he kind of took a little bit of a beating for it um so i was proud of him for that and if he can stay off of that or all and keep being productive and stuff that's amazing yeah and i have to say on on your end really really classy of you to have never brought this up before and to let him speak his truth when he was ready so like kudos to you because not a lot of people in that situation would behave that way so i think that I was like really, I really classy. Worse things i don't know you know what sorry uh, i feel like i probably did worse things instead i just didn't even think of that or all thing at the time <laughs> i probably would have brought up anything got you but. Got you. Well, look, speaking of drug habits, Catherine sobriety was questioned at the reunion as well. So let's take a look at that. What is the status of your sobriety? Um, I don't smoke weed. You don't I smoke like weed? I like do like anything illegal like that, no. So you can drink? Mm -hmm. And you don't have a problem with that? So, Naomi, that was a... That facial reaction, can you talk us through that? What are your thoughts on Catherine's sobriety? Um, I think that it's a very personal journey for her. Um, and I'm glad that she said at the reunion, you know, that she, she can drink and doesn't have a, a problem because I don't really think drinking was ever her problem or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, when you know, if you have to be sober, you have to be sober from everything. Um, so the fact that she can ease back into drinking and still be fine, I think is good. And I think it's good that she, you know, was honest about it. Um, yeah. Or at least said that she, she can drink now. Yeah. I mean, she's just been through so much. I mean, what did you make of her appearance on what, watch, watch what happens live? Cause that was brought up last night as well as to whether or not she was on something, um, do you think that she was? And also, how did you react when you saw that episode and she suggested that maybe you weren't over Craig? Yeah, I think I had the same thoughts and feelings as everyone else that watched it. You know, I remember um, talking to Austin the next day and he was like, what the hell was that? Um, I, yeah, I, I do th think she was on something. Um, I think that none of it is illegal or anything, but um, if you have just one drink, uh, if you're nervous, which I would be nervous, I mean, even, no matter how many times she's done the show before, it's still live TV. People can get nervous. Yep. Um, and if you're, you know, on anxiety medication, just a little bit of alcohol can make you a little bit loopy. Mm. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think she's doing anything 
illegal. I just think that sometimes mixing can make you act a little funny. Yeah, absolutely. And on the on the topic of her suggesting that you went over Craig, and obviously last night there was a show of hands, like who thinks that Craig is over Nomi? Are you just so glad that that conversation has now been put to rest and you can all move on with your lives once I and for all? I I cannot tell you how happy I am that that is over with. It's been because everything's on a delay, right? Things happen and then you have to relive them and then you have to like hear the public's opinion on it and keep it was just it was very dragged out, but yeah, I'm really glad it's over. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Well, Naomi, thank you so much for Skyping with us today. We're really excited yeah. for the second part of the reunion and fingers crossed for another season of Southern Charm as well, because you guys are the best. Everyone, <laughs> please make sure you stick with us because after this last break, we will be revealing the results of today's Twitter poll and giving you the gift of yet another great moment in reality history. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. It is now time to reveal the results of our question of the day. So we asked you which Southern Charmer you would want to see on Reality Check next. And with 41% of the vote, the winner is Cameron. So Cameron, give us a call. We'd love to chat with you. And if you want to bring Jason, that's fine too. Remember to check out at people on Twitter every morning at 11 a.m. Eastern to answer the Reality Check question of the day because we always want to hear from you. So make sure you're chiming in. Sadly, that is it for today's show and for the week. But I would like to give a big thank you to Naomi Olindo and Madison LaCroix from Southern Charm and Jody Gulami from People.com for being amazing additions to the show today. Also remember to follow at people on Twitter to watch the newest Reality Check episode. That's streams Monday through Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. I am going to leave you with a great moment from The Surreal Life. Who remembers that show? You will now. I'm Lindsay Rodriguez, and I'll check you next week. Bye. There's no way that he would sabotage me. In this 2007 episode of The Surreal Life Fame Games, Run Jeremy is in a pickle. He's made a secret pact with both Rob, a.k.a. Vanilla Ice, and Pepper to vote the other one off. He votes she, she votes he, I vote me, tie score. He needs a three-way tie to start over without any alliances, so Ron plans on voting against himself. Ron, those are your two chips, and they contain the names of Pepper and Rob. Until he finds out he can't. No one said the night before I couldn't vote for me. Now I'm like just literally flipping out myself. I'm really panicking. Forced to choose, Ron votes off Vanilla. Really? who was rather disappointed by the betrayal. Rob! Oh, man, it's game, dude. See Enjoy it? yourself. Ron's choice and Vanilla's reaction make this one of the greatest moments in reality history. And boy, Ice Ice Baby was hot, hot, hot. Backstabber! Oh,